In this video and the next one, we're going to be talking about the Hephthalites, otherwise known as the White Huns, as well as several key events in Central Asia prior to the arrival of the Huns on the northern Roman frontiers. So, who were these people? We don't have very many sources for these people. The Chinese and Greek sources, as well as the Roman ones, don't really mention the White Huns, if they mention them at all, largely because these people were outside the geopolitical purview of those writers. The Indian and Iranian sources that do exist are often damaged, so they must be read with care, and when they are read, what they tell us can often be very problematic. A full history of these people as of right now does not exist, so in this video I'm going to do the best I can, because once again we need to talk about linguistics. The Chinese sources that talk about the earliest history of the White Huns are very clear that the ruling group is related to the Xiongnu who moved west after their defeats by the Chinese. Indian and Roman sources, likewise, are exceedingly clear that these people term themselves White Huns. This very likely had something to do with political rhetoric, something we'll talk about in a future video, because we're going to have to go back to the Xiongnu when they were still on the Eastern Steppe, but the appellation of White has led some to talk about Attila and his group being termed the Black Huns. Certainly, the archaeology speaks to a Xiongnu connection to the White Huns, as Xiongnu artifacts are found in White Hun contexts, albeit a little altered, and they also appear to have practiced cranial deformation, something that has vague mentioning in sources on the Xiongnu. The same things are found in the context of the Black Huns, which has led some to propose a connection between the two groups, but outside of some archaeology, we don't have very much evidence. In any case, we do know that the White Huns are related to the Xiongnu proper. It's entirely possible that Attila's Huns were as well, but a better argument might be that that connection was a political one rather than an ethnic one, but we'll talk about that in later videos. It is very possible that the ruling group of the White Huns, the Hephthalites, actually had an ethnic swap. And what I mean by that is this. The Chinese sources tell us that the earliest group of leaders the White Huns have come from the Xiongnu, thus it makes sense to see the Xiongnu culture among the White Huns. In the aftermath of the Sixteen Kingdoms period of Chinese history, a new power emerges on the Eastern Steppe, the Ruran Kaganate. We have vague mentions of a vassal to the Ruran, the Hua, living at the edge of Central Asia. Much in the way that the reading for the Chinese characters for Xiangnu used to be read something like Ongna, the character for Hua has been theorized to have been pronounced something like Var. Going back a little further, Var might have been pronounced something like Angvar, some Chinese sources discuss, vaguely, that the Hua broke free of the Roran and moved into Central Asia, where there are also some hints that they took over the White Huns as rulers, establishing themselves as the Hephthalites. If, and it's a big if, that is the case, and if the Hua were known as the Angvar in late antiquity, it's entirely possible that, following the eventual breakup of the White Hun Empire, they fled to Europe, where they became known as the Avars. This is just an idea, though, and a lot more research needs to be done on the subject. At the same time, some late Roman sources mention that the Angvar mixed with the Ulgurs, a Turkic-speaking people, to the north of the White Hun territory, so there are problems with that preceding interpretation. It's at this point that we encounter even more problems in the sources. Part of the big issue with studying Attila's group of Huns is explaining why, all of a the sudden, they just burst out of Central Asia. We do know that the steppe, in the 4th century it began to dry out, so it's entirely possible that climatic conditions are what drove the Huns into Europe, and it's entirely possible that climatic conditions are what largely drove the Xiongnu and other groups in Central Eurasia to expand in the region. At the same time, the Ruran Kaganate originates in western Xinjiang, and they have a vassal people, the Angvar, otherwise known as the Hua, who are situated to the west of the territory. We know that the Roran are expanding east during the 4th century, so it's really easy to see a western expansion as the impetus for what drove the Huns out of Central Asia. Likewise, given the rapidity with which Attila's Huns expanded, it's been theorized as well that, because there were such close links between all of these different groups calling themselves Hun, and the Sogdian merchants in Central Asia that the Black Huns were dispatched to secure markets on the Pantocaspian steppe. Along with these problems comes another group of people, the Kidarites. This group of Huns typically is associated with several attacks on Central Asian cities around 360, which just presages the conquests of the White Huns. 
The term Kidarite probably comes from the Turkic word Kidariti, meaning Western, and we know from numerous anthropological studies that the steppe society is typically associated the four directions with different colors. South was signified by the color red, east by blue, north by black, and west by white. So the term Kidarite has been hypothesized to be referring to the same people who we know as White Huns. After all, the dates for the Kidarite and White Hunnic conquests are broadly equivalent. Some have viewed the usage of Kushan symbols and coins as evidence of an Iranian identity, but as Kim points out, it's better to view the usage of Kushan symbols by the White Huns as just another form of cultural adaptation that Central Asian states had to go through in order to claim political legitimacy over a region and its associated peoples. Indian texts state that the Kidarites were destroyed by the Hephthalites, however, so how do we make sense of this if they ruled over the same people? Well, if we can take that earlier theory as correct, and the Hephthalites were actually the same as the Angvar, then for some reason they were able to break away from the Roran and oust the Kidarites as the ruling dynasty of the White Huns, wiping them out in the Gandhara region sometime between 470 and 500, after which the Hephthalite-led White Huns menace and eventually take down the Gupta Empire. In the aftermath of this conquest, which late Gupta sources actually attempt to downplay, but which end up fooling nobody, the White Huns begin to menace Persia. In Persian sources, the term Chianite crops up as well in reference to a people in Central and Northern South Asia, but it's now accepted that the Chianites refers to the Kidarites and the Hephthalites, adding further weight to a connection between the two. For decades, the White Huns had the upper hand, and they forced the Persians to pay tribute to them. They even lose territory to the Huns. This situation changes in 442, though. In this year, the Persians halt the payment of all tribute to the Kidarites, and they strike an alliance with the Hephthalites, ultimately helping the Hephthalites to destroy the Kidarites. This is an alliance that does not last, though, and the Persians and the new Hephthalite dynasty soon come to blows, which we'll talk about in the next video.